Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to add cube maps to our program. This will be a lot of fun. Let's jump in and do it. So the basic concept of a cube map is that it's like a texture array. It's like an onion texture. Has anyone heard that phrase? Um, it's like a, a texture array where every one of those textures corresponds to a side of a physical cube. And the way we sample from it is we input a three-dimensional vector, and that vector is interpreted as a direction passing out from the origin, and the API does a sort of under the hood virtual ray trace and imagines where on the cube that um, ray would hit. There's a few stages involved in this. So for one thing, if I open up my textures folder, I have not got my cube maps. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead, open up Finder, and inside the textures folder, I've got a bunch of these sky textures, and these are going to form my cube map. Each of these images is a side of my cube map. So what I'll do is I'll grab all of them, and I will just come in and drag them into the folder. Copy items if needed. Yep, no worries. I've got all of those. Okay. The next thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a class to represent my cube map. Now, in a previous video, I made a class called a material lump. And a material lump was basically a sort of like a, a really big texture where every array layer of that texture is a different image. And the concept with the cube map is pretty similar. The way my workflow was for the material lump is I went ahead and created a bunch of materials, individual textures, and then one by one, I told my material lump to consume those textures, and then I called this finalize function. So I'm gonna do something very similar here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna be copy pasting most of the material lump code. So I'll head over here to view, I'll right click, and I'll say make a new file, and this will be a Swift file, and I will go ahead and call this cube map material. Then I'll grab my material lump and pretty much control A, a command A, command C, copy everything and just paste that in. There we have it. Of course, I'll have to name this. I'll name it cube map material. Okay. And when I initialize this cube map material, I am not going to need a layer count because I'll know how many layers I'll need. Now, there's a bit of a funny thing here. So let me, I'll go ahead and do this and I'll show you. If we have a cube map, a cube has six faces. So my imagining, my thought process is that we're gonna declare six array layers. Let's see how that goes. Now for the texture type, I'm going to make this a type cube and I don't think anything else is needed. So what this initializer is doing is it is allocating space for six textures, each being 1024 by 1024. That's the dimensions of my images. And then when I go to consume a material, I have this blip command encoder. I encode a command to copy into that destination at the specified layer. So actually, like I said, all of this is pretty much gonna be the same. I think probably, it's probably fine. We'll, we'll find out. We will find out. Okay, so what I'll then do is I'll go over to my renderer and for my renderer, in addition to my material lump, I'm gonna have a cube map. So then pretty similar to what I did down below, I will load in a bunch of materials so as I'm sure you can appreciate, this is not the most exciting part of the tutorial. We're just going to go ahead and create a material for the front, back, left, right, top, bottom, all of that. With that done, what I'll do is pretty much copy all this code from the material lump, but do the same thing for the cube map, remembering that we don't need that layer count. We can then go ahead and tell the cube map to consume each of these materials. Uh, 
Okay, cool. So we can pretty much see what's going on here. It's just a whole bunch of code. So we have got our textures theoretically loaded in. The next thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a shader to um, put that image on the screen. Now here's the concept. What I want to do is I want to fill in all of the background of the sky. And it's a bit, it's a bit of a hack the way I'm going to do this, but I'm basically going to draw a quad the size of the screen. And then for each pixel on that quad, I'm going to calculate the direction that the camera is looking. If we look from the camera through that pixel on the screen, what direction is that coming out? A few things are going to be involved here. For one thing, I'm going to need to send all of the camera's fundamental direction vectors to the shader. I'm going to need to bundle together the forwards, right, and up vectors and pass that data over. So I'm going to head over to my bridging header, definitions.h, and I'm going to declare a new struct, and this will be pretty similar, a little similar to the camera parameters. I'm going to call this camera frame because it's like a frame of reference. Okay, great. So we've got the forwards, right, and up vectors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a shader file for my sky shader. Remember, the basic idea is to draw a screen-sized quad. So with that in mind, I'll just pop in here and I will make a new file that will be a metal file and I will call this sky shaders. I'm going to go ahead and grab the post-processing shader because it's actually pretty similar to what I'm going to do here. So my bundle here, I'm going to call um, fragment sky. We're going to need to know the position in the world or on the screen. And I'm also going to have a, a float three, which is going to be the direction that the camera is looking through that pixel. So I'm just going to modify this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to have, I'll relabel all of this as vertex shader sky. We're going to have our set of vertices on buffer zero. Um, I'm also going to have a, we're going to need that camera frame. So I'll have a constant camera frame reference called camera, and that will be buffer index one for the vertex shader. And we're still going to use our vertex ID. So just as a refresher, I'm going to be reusing the screen quad mesh. And if I go over here to screen quad, we can see that basically this is NDC. So we're going from X of negative one to X of positive one, Y of negative one to positive one. Um, and that's sort of covering the whole screen. So what I want to do is take that position and then the position on the screen will give the coefficients for the combination, the linear combination of camera direction vectors. I know that sounds strange. I will get into that now. So I'm going to have my output, we'll grab that vertex, the position, yeah, as we can see here. And then what I'm going to do is instead of worrying about this, I'm not sure why it keeps doing that. But anyway, I'm going to grab that position and I'll say, mm, I'll do this. So I'll say, have a horizontal coefficient and a vertical coefficient. My horizontal coefficient will be my, get that vertex, get its position, that's a float two, get the X, coord, uh, X component of that. Why does it keep tabbing it over? Okay. So here's the combination that I wanna take. I wanna take my camera, I wanna take its forwards vector plus the horizontal coefficient times its right vector plus the vertical coefficient times its up vector. Now I know that I've sort of explained this a number of times in different tutorials, but I'll just talk through this again really briefly. So right now I'm looking at a little plane. There's my face there. Um, if I am dead center in the plane, then we have zero and zero. Oops, that's a little off, but you know what I mean. Zero and zero. 
that's a little confronting for my horizontal and vertical coefficients. In other words, the the world direction vector is just my forwards vector. On the other hand, if I am over here, that's negative one on the x, and so this direction vector is my forwards vector minus my right vector. Similarly, here I'm at positive one, this direction vector is my forwards vector plus my right vector. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this result, and I don't think I have to normalize it, but I will anyway, and I will set that as Yeah, the direction of the output. So that's all good. Then on the fragment shader side, I will take that in. Why? Oh my goodness. Love the editor. Put this texture 2D. I think I want to go texture cube. I'm going to call this sky material. We go. And I'll call this sky sampler. So I'm going to radically simplify this. I'm simply going to return that. I'm not going to worry about any of that pro post processing stuff. That is. Uh, so I'll take my sky material and then take that direction vector. And that's what I'll want. There we go. Cool. So I'll take that direction vector and I will use that to find where on the cube map we are looking. So it's all coming together. What I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to need to load this sky shader into my renderer, create a pipeline state for it, and then, hmm, yeah, and then go ahead and pass the camera data off to the shader and go. So I'll go to probably my definitions, and right down here I've got these different pipeline types. I'm going to define a new pipeline type, which I'll call pipeline type sky. Then I'll go to my renderer, and if I quickly inspect what I've got here, we have, yeah, a dictionary. And the way this is being populated is we go down here, and we have our various pipelines. So like the lit pipeline, we go ahead and create it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my sky pipeline actually down here, because it will be using the same vertex layout as the post-processing so I'll say, all right, um, this is pipeline type sky. I'm going to build the pipeline with the following entry points. And I'll just go ahead and neaten this up a little bit, something like that. So I know that a lot of this is rehashing stuff that I did previously, um, but we also have this custom render pass. Now what that custom render pass does is it renders to an offline texture. And then the default render pass, which is created on the fly during rendering, we go right down to draw. We use the, well, anyway, somewhere in here, I think in draw lit objects, we're using, oh, here we are. Okay. Yeah. Up here, we're using the custom render pass. And then down below, we construct our um, default render pass, which goes to the screen. Um, but anyway, so what I want to do really is I want to draw the sky. And then I'll go ahead and do everything else. So I'll get the, um, yeah, I'll get the draw lit objects and copy that. Okay, cool. Looking in here, we want to arm our sky pipeline. Yeah, custom render pass depth sensor state. That's fine. Want to set the vertex buffer and the vertex buffer I'm going to set to my screen quad at index zero and then i'm also going to pass in the camera data so the way i'll do that is okay i'm gonna pass that info in there so we'll take our scene player forwards and so on see here the formatting's fine it doesn't try to indent me like 12 tabs okay cool so i'll go ahead and keep going here so again we'll set the vertex bytes send in that camera frame for the length we'll have go at an index of one cool so we'll send in the camera stuff then i'll go ahead and set the 
fragment texture and I'll do that with the cube map and same for the sampler probably don't need to do any of this okay and then this draw function I can replace if I go down to the post processing that will pretty much go ahead and draw the screen quad okay so fingers crossed moment of truth let's see how this goes okay there we go so um failed okay so as always it's that fundamental rule that the uh, sillier, mis sillier a mistake is the longer it stays in so what i had is i had this fragment shader sky but i had forgotten to change its name it was fragment shader post but i think this should be working now so if i run this it will say build succeeded and i'm pretty sure it'll give an error yeah it does okay that's fine. Let's have a look at this. So it says here, Metal Descriptor has an array length of six greater than the maximum allowed size of one. Right. So for some reason, it turns out that even though we know that a cube has six faces, we need to specify an array length of one. That's fine. Let's give that another go. Build succeeded. Now, clearly there are some problems. For one, not everything here is matching, although this does a pretty good job. Um, but then also, there's no objects, so that's not right. So let me go ahead and close this down, and we'll tackle this one at a time. So for one thing, I'm just going to try old trusty. I'm just going to try shuffling some of these cube map things around. Oh, look. That's solved it. I got lucky. I really did. I was not intending for that to happen. Okay. Uh, by the way, I should probably do this. Um, we can also run this. We've got that there. Then pop over to Xcode. Hit the M to get a... Whoop. Okay. Capturing metal shade of validation is not supported. Okay. So what I need to do is disable uh, shader validation and then we can capture stuff so i'll just go product and here to scheme edit scheme and then i think it is yeah over here in diagnostics under run and i'm just going to disable shader validation and i think that should then work Okay, so no shader validation, that's fine. I'll just pop over here, capture a frame. And then in here we have this option, show memory. And I can see the various, yeah, the various textures. This is telling me that I should probably be more careful about deleting textures because they seem to still be hanging around. Should probably be more explicit about that. But anyway, here we have texture cube. And if I double click in there, I can see that those images have all been correctly loaded which is very cool. Cool. So the cube map is working. Uh, now for the issue of seeing things. Okay. So that comes down to the way this stuff is being sent in. So here, when I write my quad, when I write my fragment, I'm writing that at a depth of zero, which is right at the screen level, it's covering everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in at a depth of one. That'll write it out in the distance. And then hopefully, uh-oh, but look at this. Everything's out in front of it. Hmm. And the reason for this is to do with the, the depth operation in the render path. So if I go over to my where is this render pass and I look down this is color buffer descriptor sampler for that uh, the depth okay so it's a 2d image all of that and then right here depth compare function I'm going to change this to less or equal because what's happening is when we begin rendering, we flash the screen off with a depth of one. But then when we try to write the sky image at a depth of one, that will fail the less than function. But hopefully, yeah, okay. So here you can see 
that uh, we've got the sky. But it's not right. It's the opposite in the X. The Y looks okay. We'll go back to that. But the X is opposite. Okay, no problem. So we'll just, that's super trippy. We'll just pop over to the sky shaders and then I will just apply a negative here. That should be fine. Give that a go. And now it's sort of working. But as you can see, it's it's not quite moving the way I would expect it to. So everything is happening in world space. But this little view frust frustum, I hate it, frustrum, this view frustrum thing that I have is not it's a limited portal into the world. So I believe I'm viewing with a view angle of about 49, uh, yeah, 45 degrees or something like that. And so pi on eight above, pi on eight below or something like that. I'm rambling a little bit. The point is I wanna work out what fraction of the world each of these extremes of the screen is corresponding to. So the way I can do that is I'll just go to my sky shaders. I'll bake this in, but in the GitHub code, it'll be, it'll be done properly. Let me just go float dy equals, I'll go 0 0.414, I think. And the way I've got that is pi of, sorry, 10 of pi on 8. Let's find out. Oh, yeah, we need to use it for something, right? Okay, um, so I will get dy times my vertical. And now, hopefully, the, um, the y-axis, at least, is looking much more accurate. So I'm accurately determining the, um, the world space significance of my... Um, up vector. It's pretty cool. Now, the horizontal coefficient is basically that times, so dy, times the aspect ratio, which I think is four thirds. There we go. It's, it's not perfect, but it's much better. I would say it's much better. In this video, we pretty much did cube maps. It's pretty cool how this is already adding more realism to the scene. It's, you know, super realistic. What do we have here? Like uh, post-apocalyptic Mickey Mouse in heaven, black and white heaven. That's pretty cool. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had a lot of fun and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hi, everybody. I just want to take a second to say thank you to all of my channel supporters. If you would like to support the channel, it's only $2.50 a month. That's it. But it really does help, even just in terms of motivation for me to make more videos. If you cannot afford to support the channel monetarily, that is totally fine. I do not expect it. The best thing you can do is pop on there, comment, let me know what sorts of things you'd like to see, and if there's anything I can do to improve the videos. I am trying my hardest to improve the videos, although it may not always seem that way. So, thank you so much to Antonin Karet, Dankil Foles, Declan, Endalon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Jason Coleman, Matthew Derrick, Moim, Shreyar, Skibbity Pop, and Maxim Shukim. Thank you so much, my dudes. It means so much. Have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Bye.